So welcome to our episode of Did She Really Say That? Our Truth Bomb podcast for female entrepreneurs that are looking to build a sustainable business, have fun doing it, and not go completely insane. For those that don't know me, my name is Chef Katrina. I am one of the co-founders of Truth Bomb Academy, and I'm joined by my business partner, Heidi Muma. She doesn't know who she is. What do you do? What do I do? I'm the CFO, and I help women to manage and create the cash management system that is effective for your business so that your business is serving you and you're not serving your business. So you mean we get to actually make money and keep it in business? Yes. Excellent. I love yeah. this conversation. So we have a very special guest joining us today because she is a powerhouse. Like I met her and I was like, ooh, this is a woman you want to know. You want to talk about super connector? Audrey mm -hmm. is a super connector. In my world, her superpower is the ability to connect women to ideas, businesses, resources, and be a resource for them. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited because one of the things that shocked me when I first met her is that she built a women's chamber of commerce. And I was like, wait a minute, there's chambers of commerce for all businesses and you built one specifically for women. So I was super curious. So we're going to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. What had Audrey go, hey, I want to build this type of support system for the female entrepreneur. And then a little bit of a twist in what she's taken on just recently that's coming out on Amazon. Uh, we're going to dive into that too. So Audrey, if you'll take a moment just to quickly introduce yourself. <laughs> First of all, thank you both for having me. It's so funny. Listen to Katrina talk, right? I feel like... I like this is your thing mm -hmm. like you sound so newsy like yeah. I'm listening to her talk about this whole like her that I love the way you guys play off each other but thank you so much for this opportunity um yeah I am an entrepreneur I've been one for a very long time since 1997 so mm. 27 years um I'm an inventor. I call that my first real business. I invented the first plus size fashion doll. I call it my first real business because that was a business I had to learn how to raise funding for. I spent a year on Wall Street looking for money up and down subways inside. It's, if you've never been on the New York subway, it's extremely hot, especially in the summertime. Mm -hmm. But I spent a year um, on, on Wall Street looking for money. And um, that's why I call it my first real business. I learned a lot in that process. And after I started the business, because we did finally get some money, we started the business in 1999, ran that business for six years to 2005. And then my partner, um, she and her husband moved to Texas. He worked for Fox News at the time. And um, they transferred him to Texas. And so by that time, I was a little bit burned out anyway, because it was just a lot of work. We were manufacturing in Hong Kong. We were, I was doing a lot of shows up and down the highway and, you know, just all, all kind of doll shows. And I was burned out. So by the time 2005 rolled around, I was ready to take a break. Mm -hmm. And because she moved and I didn't have my partner anymore. Um, and my husband and I were dating at the time. So he became, came, kind of became my partner, but I wanted to kind of be in the relationship at that time. Like I was like, I'm tired. I just want to enjoy the relationship because we met as a result of the business. So um, we just, I decided to close the company down and around, right around that time I got, um, someone asked me how to start a business. So mm -hmm. I wrote a book, how to start a business because people would ask me that all the time because of the type of business that I started. I can't draw a straight line y'all, like literally. <laughs> back up straight I've never I'm not that I'm not a straight line kind of person so when people would say well how did you get the idea for this doll and I was like well I was sitting at a job that I hated and it got just dropped the idea in my head and I told my friend Georgette about it and I didn't know she was a doll collector and um she had she told me to come by her house that day when I told her she had just purchased the doll that cost $250 I was like people pay $200 for a doll and she was like yeah she showed me this beautiful doll in this beautiful box which I probably would never touch because I'm like, it's beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, we're going to be rich. That's what I said right that day. And um, that didn't happen by the way. But I, you know, from that point on, I, you know, I, I was able to take what was in my head, an idea that was in my head and, and give it to a, a sculptor who sculpted what was in my head into clay. And mm. she sent me the clay from Kinchlow, Michigan. And I looked at the clay and I was like, yeah, she's supposed to be plus size. So you can give it, you got to give it some more boobs and some more booty, you know, <laughs> so you got to be a little bit better. So she did that. And then she sent me back the, the prototype and wax. And then I took the wax and I sent it to a manufacturer in Hong Kong and they created our injection molds for the dolls. And that's how my first company, I call it my first real company was born. So um, after that, I decided to, um, after we closed the company, 
I was a small business consultant with Rutgers University Small Business Development Center. And I did that mm -hmm. probably about three years mm -hmm. and um, just coaching, coaching other people in business who wanted to start businesses. So I, I kind of liked the idea of coaching and stayed in that space for a while. And I kind of still think I coach a little bit to this day, but you do. Um, not as much as I did back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. So I have a question because this is always comes up for me. Uh, do you have any regrets about just closing the business and not selling it or continue on that legacy? Yeah, it was so many things that went into me closing it. It was some personal stuff that happened that I wasn't happy with. So I do. And the reason I say that is because the one thing when we first started, if, if you are an entrepreneur and you've been doing this for a certain amount of time, you become a serial entrepreneur just because you can't help yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. It, before you become a serial entrepreneur, you're just an entrepreneur. You're, you're focused. You got one thing on your mind. You're in that space. That's what you want to do. I feel like if if things had went a little bit different, we would have taken that company. It would have been a million dollar company. So I have my regrets now and again. Like I go back and forth with like, oh my God, I wish I would have just kept it going. So yeah, I do um, because it was a very unique company. Mm -hmm. And we were the first to do it. Now you can find plus size dollars on the market. Before then, you couldn't find any. I think the next plus size doll that came out after hours was Emmy. She was a plus size model. Do you guys remember her? Emmy? Mm -hmm. She was tall, blonde. She was a plus size model. So we came out with our doll and then they came out with one of Emmy. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but now you can find them all over the place. Even Mattel has one right now. I mean, she's still not plus size, plus size, but she's bigger than Barbie. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I do, I do have, I do have some regrets sometimes because that's when I was really super focused. Now I'm a serial entrepreneur. So that's a different story. It is. Yeah. So you've been building businesses, you've been coaching, you've been helping a lot of, of, of women. You got into the chamber of commerce and I know you're, like I said, you're for me, a powerhouse connector. Like you just like, there's just this ability to connect people together, uh, make introductions. And then like, when you hear somebody speak, your brain just goes off like a light bulb and says all these different things you can do. Uh, Cause I've seen it happen. It's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> you just give Audrey an idea and she's like, Oh, and they could do this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And you're like, slow down. Like I get it. Yeah. So one of the things that was really fascinating when we first met is you said you were, you know, running this women's chamber of commerce. Why, why a women's, why not just be part of another chamber of commerce? What had you really create that differential in the market? Well, actually I came from another chamber. So before I launched the Gwinnett Women's Chamber of Commerce, I was the vice president of another chamber. Mm. And God had given me this idea two years prior to me becoming the vice president of that chamber. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait. Because at that time, I think I was the marketing director for that chamber. And then I, I went up, I um I got voted in to be the vice president. And I was like, okay, well, I'm the vice president. And so things wasn't going quite the way I thought they should. Um, And so because they weren't at the end of 2022, I think it was, yeah, 2022, I decided to step down and do what God told me to do, which was launch the Women's Chamber. Now, the reason that I launched it was because we had a lot of women who felt like they needed more of a community, which is interesting because that's what they asked for, right? We need more of a community, and I don't think they really wanted that, which is mm -hmm. kind of weird. So that's a, you know, that's something that I'm learning, and I try to, what I've, what I've learned in running the Gwinnett Women's Chamber is that even though we are, they say they want these things, right? Mm. I feel like there has to be a very specific thing to be create that type of community. And I'll give you a prime example. So we have a chamber. We thought, well, it's enough to have a women's chamber. It's not. And we've learned that the hard way. When I look at communities that grow, they are centered around a thing. I mm. thought that the women would be centered around the chamber. I thought that they would be centered around growing their business. It wasn't that. It needs to be a specific thing. So let's say, for instance, what, what you do, Heidi, right? There is a woman, and I, you probably know her, but she's doing $300,000 a month in your space, right? Wow. She has 2,000 paid members that pay her a month, but they're all centered around what you do. Mm. That's what they do. And I, and so, and, and one of our members is in her program. And I said to her, what makes her so successful? Well, everybody in that group, they're all crafters. That's what they do. And they I was all like, craft oh. in the same thing? Different things, but just crafters. They all buy blanks. They all buy mugs. They all buy t-shirts. They all buy transfers, crafters. Mm -hmm. They all buy crickets. You know, they all buy heat press. That's what they do. And so I've learned that those type of communities 
are so much more stronger. And when I, and I'm thinking just being a women's chamber would be be enough. It's not because everybody in the women's chamber do something different. Mm. So what I thought we would connect together as a as women in business, not so much. It takes a lot of work. Not do I feel like we're gonna get there? Yeah, I do. You know, we still have a great membership. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot harder and it's going to take a lot longer to get to 2000 members paying $197 a month. That's, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? So it's that type of thing. So in, in doing this, so the woman said they wanted the a group of women just to talk about business. There's been the idea that they haven't quite come together yet. Um, so what is the, the next step for you with the chamber? Like, I, are you going to continue to grow that? Or are you continuing to make that your focus? Is there something else that you find yourself wanting to wrap these women around in terms of like an idea, product, technology, mission? Yeah. So, so yes, the, I'm going to continue to grow because I, I still real, I still feel like we do a great job of bringing people together. Hence this mm -hmm. is how I met you guys. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and even though I think what I feel like is that a lot of people don't really know what they need in their business. And I say that because I've put out surveys like three times and I guarantee you, I probably got seven. The first mm -hmm. time I got like three out of a huge membership of almost 60 women, I got like three. Then I got like seven and I think I got like three again. It's like, so, and, and it was really quick. Like, what do you want? You know, how can we help you? How can we support you? And I still feel like a lot of them just don't know what they want. And they feel like I'm running this business, but they really aren't running businesses. What they have done is created jobs for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they're not there, nothing happens. So they, they can't even take time to go network because when they do that, nobody's running the business because mm -hmm. they have created a high level job for themselves. And I'm guilty of that. Like I've done that so many times. And so um, <laughs> the goal is still to, right, right. We all have, the goal is to um, continue to grow the chamber. But what I've realized too, is that a lot of women are deathly afraid of AI and, mm. and technology. And, you know, we are, we want to be a sustainable company. We want to be a company, an organization that supports women in tech and showing them how to really leverage AI. Last year, this year, we did the Georgia AI Summit, which was a phenomenal event. It was it was really nice. We're going to do it again in 2025. So it'll be our second annual Georgia AI Summit. And I was in a meeting um, last Friday. There were there were two Google execs there. It was an amazing meeting. One Verizon exec, um, one Accenture exec, and one Spark Novus exec, right? All talking about nothing but AI. What was interesting about that meeting, because I, I talk, I hear a lot about AI, one of the Google execs was like, you know, I'm just saying like, what you, what you guys really need to pay attention to is AI. Now for your listeners and viewers who are listening, if you don't know, Google is a major player in the AI space with Gemini. Yep. He's like, I'm not saying that Google is doing whatever, but I'm just saying like, we got to think about AI like the auto revolution. We got to think about AI like the in, in the internet revolution. This is how we need to be thinking about AI. And he was a top level top level exec. And we I'm talking about we were in a room. It was seventy five of us, and I'm like, you know something, which I'm you sure he does. He does. You know what's interesting when you talk about that though? I remember reading an article not too long ago that talked about how AI is like um, predominantly male based in language and inversion. Like we actually do need more women in AI to coach and train AI from a female voice mm. because it's something like only 20% of AI actually recognizes uh, the dialect, the conversations, the what, what women want, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yes. speak the female language. And so if we want to create a non-bias AI that works for all of us as human beings, we really need women to step into this technology and not be so afraid of it, but look at what they're contributing by just mm -hmm. getting started in it. Because you get to be the, the voice that actually helps craft how this tool and technology is going to be used. And I think for most women, they don't understand how critical it is for them to be, I mean, I use AI. Um, I use chat GPT for a lot of different things for when my marketing and I always have to prompt it up, up until recently. <laughs> I needed in a female voice. I need a softer tone out like you. I really have had to coach it because it kept giving me this same and I'm going to say BS 
that I've been hearing in the world of business. And I was like, I don't want to hear this anymore. Like I'd rather have a, a different approach to this. So really when you talk about how you're using AI, I've seen it from a marketing standpoint. I'm in conversation with a gentleman right now. I can't go into all the details because it's proprietary non-disclosure, but it goes into the world of relationships, mm -hmm. of, of male and female dynamics. They're looking to le learn how to use AI in that area. So there's so many different ways to incorporate that. So I'm glad you brought that up because I, I really do believe that if you resist it, you're going to cause resistance for you and accepting it into your life. And if you ex embrace it, it's going to change. So where do you see AI going, especially with like the women's chamber, with what you're building in your businesses and, and those meetings that you're inside of? What do you envision? I, I see us creating more access to AI for our members, but those who want it, right? We can't force people to take it. We can only we can only share right so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in those meetings i'm talking to people I, I hear what they're saying the goal is to create a database where we can keep training like our, yep. our community we have a community i haven't put anything of ai in the community because i've been trying to figure out you know which way we want to go but now that i know and and i realize if they don't fall in line they will be left behind yeah um, when you look at the strike where we are right now right well they they paused the strike right a lot of what the people, the longshoremen were saying was that we fear automation. And a lot of people don't even know what automation is. What they fear was the automation that AI provides. Like if you look at what they were asking, that was one of the number one things, money and, and automation was number two. They fear losing their jobs to AI. And here's the thing, you will lose those jobs because they are already training smart robots to do the things that we won't do, the things uh -huh. we can't do. You know, you they're not going to call in sick. They're not going to take lunch breaks. They're not going to the bathroom. They don't need to smoke, right? They can lift more than you can lift. They can stay. It's all, they, they will lose those positions. And that's a fear for a lot of people. So when I think about where women are, think about the, the men that are afraid. What, what, what about you? I was, I was, um, and I don't know, I, I don't know if I shared this, but I was watching a video one day. A young lady had a company. I thought it was pretty good. She said, oh, AI. she said, I just knew AI would never take jobs, right? The way she had her company structured, she wanted her customer service to be answered within 24 hours. Now, she had a virtual assistant, and that was her job, right? But the virtual assistant said, you know, you're not the only client I got, but I can get to your people in 48 hours. She didn't want that. She wanted 24. Uh -huh. Well, she sat down, and she created a smart assistant that did everything that the virtual assistant did, plus more. Mm. Yeah. And when she did that, she was like, I got to fire her. She said, I felt so bad because I'm spending $60 on this AI that does everything she does plus more and I'm paying her a thousand mm. and she she said I had to let it go but it because it, at the end of the day it doesn't make sense to the bottom line these are the type of things we want women to understand it may be scary to hear the word AI but can you put AI in your business and position it well enough so that it can I'm not saying replace people but it could definitely help you be more productive you know, it could definitely help you reach more people. It could definitely help you get your marketing message out even further. Can, is there a way for you to implement that? So we're definitely doubling down on AI um, yeah. because I'm in that space. I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm hearing what they're saying. We're definitely doubling, doubling down on AI. And the goal is to be able to make sure that our members have access to the tools and the information so they can make smart decisions about these smart technologies that's going to help them grow their business. Yeah. And I think this is such a crucial conversation because I have so many women that are deathly afraid of it. We just interviewed um, and had a training on with a woman that did conversation AI. Like, how do you do conversation funnels? So it's the same thing. It's training mm -hmm. that AI to be able to be in conversation as a part of a marketing tool. So all these things are evolving and I'm seeing AI show up. And I mean, I swear I get an email at least twice a day from different <laughs> companies on, you know, we've incorporated AI here, we've incorporated AI there. I mean, we're just seeing it. So it's either embrace it and see how to better use it for your time. Like you said, so super, super glad mm -hmm. we're having this conversation. I was, I was on a, I was on a conference call right before you guys. It was interesting because it was mostly men on that call. It was 143 people on that call. And the person that was hosting the call was selling a product was 9,000 and something, I think 9,987 or something like that. And the thing that they were selling, like the thing that brought all of those people to the room and got other people enrolled in that program was AI. Mm. It wasn't the person who, who started, because the person who started it is extremely, extremely famous, but the people kept saying, yeah, it was the AI, the AI helped me do the marketing. I'm thinking, really? 
like that's what they and so and it was like listen you mean if you can you don't have a nine whole nine thousand right now you can pay 8.95 a month for 12 months that and that's what they were saying and people were like yeah i, I took the class I'm, i sent one guy say he has a team of 20 all 20 of his people had to go through that class it's a three day and it's three days huh it was a three-day boot camp for like nine thousand and something dollars but what they were saying was it was the ai i was so excited about the ai and i'm thinking that's like a that's like a custom gpt like <laughs> you know but 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 you can't knock the house i'm like what? that's a yeah. that's like a custom gpt for real yeah. you know yeah. but they didn't they don't have time they're busy running their business. And this guy, he had a team of 20 people. He said, but what happened was inside of that program, he also learned that he expanded his company and now became an employee owned company mm. with him, which I thought that was really cool too. So they got a lot of stuff out of there, but the selling point was the AI part of it, the AI marketing piece. Yeah. Interesting. Do you think men like embrace it easier? Because I feel like what I'm seeing on social media, especially is like everybody's fearful of the, 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 the AI, like all the photos that are AI um, created and how fake they are. And, and there's ways that you can tell, but it's like, I think it's that fear things like, no, even when the cell phones came out, I resisted ever getting a cell phone. Did not want one, did not want to be contacted 24 seven. I was just like, when I'm not home, you leave me alone. And then now it's like, I can't live without it. And yeah. it's like, but it's getting, it's like, it's that new technology and the fear of what it's going to change in our lives and what we don't want it to change. And it's like, I think, I don't know, for me, I think I'm, women tend to be more resistant to things like that that we see the fearful side of it because AI is being, I mean, anything, everything is good and everything is bad. And, and it's like, and it's like you looking at AI and there's some fan, there's awesome things about it. It's, it's fantastic. And it's like, definitely, it's like the conversation AI thing I was blown away with. I was like, that is incredible. And it's like, but then you have the, the, the crook side of it, the criminal side of it, the that, darker side, the darker side of it that is being used to, to, um, manipulate, like, manipulate people and get in and, and pre like they're, they're in, they're in, they're, um, being imposters. They're, they're, sh they're, they're creating things to impersonate you with AI. And so it's like, I guess that that's where I'm, I'm, I'm still like, I love AI. I use it. I use chat GBT, but at the same time, I'm like, I'd almost rather do it in my own voice and make sure it's my voice, not AI's voice. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how to like, and that's, and that's part of training AI too. training the chat G, chat GBT. I think, I think when I look at AI and men, I always look at it as a tool. I feel like it's like the it's like the tool to fix the car, right? Yeah. Like dudes, dudes will always when it's a tool, they're on it, right? They're the right. ones that first jump out there. They're on it. They're figuring out all the pieces and how it works and how to fix things. That's what they do. Women are not like that. We get we get blindsided by all the pretty, all of the beautiful images and the graphics mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. What's up under the hood? No, nine times out of ten, we don't care about it. Right. We want we want to buy the tool because we don't mind spending the money. We want to they don't want to spend money. They're not like us. That's why we <laughs> always handle all the money. Right. We like, mm -hmm. look, we're going to pay for convenience. We don't we don't need to know how it works. We just can't make it pretty, can not draw a line, whatever. We're going to pay the, the, the subscription. That's not how they think. They think about it's a tool. I need to know how to work the tool so mm -hmm. now I can sell a tool. That's right. not how we think most of the time. So I feel like they've embraced it way more than we have for that mm -hmm. reason alone because they see it as a tool and they see it as a way to make money, whereas we see it as a tool, but not necessarily the way they see it. I yeah. think about podcasting, right? Do you know, we had back in 2019, I had to speak about podcasting on a cruise ship. Like someone paid for me to come on a cruise ship to talk about podcasting. So of course oh, I had to do my little presentation <laughs> and everything. And I get, I'm doing the research and I'm like, wait a minute, more men listen to podcasts than women? Yes. At that time, 2019, it was about 15% more men that listen to podcasts than women. And I thought that was shocking because I'm thinking, well, I know for sure we're listening to it, washing clothes and, you know, doing the dishes and we weren't, we weren't doing it. Now we're a little bit about 50, 50, but it took from 19 to the pandemic to happen when we didn't have anything but time for that to number to jump up. We're, we're like, we're like late adopters to everything the women are. Mm -hmm. And it's because we don't see how it could benefit us 
Now, I, I will say that that has changed somewhat because now there are a lot of women who are seeing possibilities that they didn't see before with AI. And we'll talk about that when we start to talk about the book and I'll tell y'all what I'm doing. But that is that's starting to change. And still, again, though, it's that whole creative, pretty, you know, always oh, easy, pretty kind of thing. However, they're looking at it like, OK, well, I can probably make some serious money with this thing. Um, because it can do all these things I really don't have time to do because I got to take the kids to soccer you know I got to go to ballet and you know let me do the, the list you know all these different yeah. things so we're looking at it from that perspective and I think there's a piece of that too I think women are more sometimes we get this technology but we're so inundated in reality right we're yes. inundated with with taking care of the kids or being a caregiver that we're kind of in the human yeah. element of it that we don't always look up to see what is coming into our universe until it's it's forced onto us mm -hmm. as an inevitable. Now it's here, start using it. So I think sometimes we, as women, we just, we don't look up. And I think that would be the best way I explain it. It's like, we don't lift our head yeah. up to then like scour the line and read other articles outside of just taking care of the family or loved ones or what's going on. So I think that's where... And it's not necessarily that we're behind. It's that we don't lift our head up to see or hear or be part of that. So I love when you say it's like, it is starting to happen. We're starting to see the rise of women. This has been a conversation for the last, I want to say year and a half, almost two years now, is that there's this awakening that's happening with women. There's this yes. waking up to the world around them, what's possible, their contribution, what they can do. So I love this because you talk about like, what's the next, what's the next evolution for women. And it is being more able to participate in the creation of the world around us. Instead of being at the yeah. effect of it, women are saying, how do I better create this world that I'm currently in? How do I elevate my status? How do I invite my partner or spouse to be a participant in the family, but still be able to contribute financially to the whole? So I, I yeah. think that's what you're looking at is that we finally started looking up instead of having our heads down and trying just to maintain the balance of what's going on in our lives. We're starting to see what's like, we're, we've started to see the horizon, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. now we're starting to look up into the universe and go, okay, what, what is my purpose here? So I love this. And then and this does tie in for like what you're creating with your book. So I know you, you've, you're an author, you're a podcaster, you're a media specialist. I mean, girl, you've got like a world of wealth of knowledge behind you. So in all that you do in all the activities and all the offices and conferences, and I feel like you've got a pinky in everything to be <laughs> honest, right? How did you find time to write a book? Well, honestly, Katrina, that's the first thing I ever did. What? Yeah, that was the very first thing I did. So I, my first book was in 1998. That was the very first thing I did. Okay. And um, I was a co-author on a book in 1998 with Georgette and one of my other friends. We wrote yeah. a book called The Cookbook to Romance. And it's so funny because I've been talking about it ever since I did it. So let me show you what it looked like. You guys can look inside. It'd be crazy. So. Oh, my gosh. That's my very first book. Now, look at the names on the bottom. Oh, my gosh. Nice. So. The names on the bottom were pen names because the book is called The Cookbook to Romance. Right. And I went to church, but Adele, who is Amanda Rochelle in the book, was heavily into church. So she couldn't and use her real name. She, nope. She didn't want her pastor to know what was in the book. So we didn't put our names on the book. We put our pen names on the book. So I started out writing books. We started, we wrote this book and then I just kept writing books after that because people would ask me, well, how do I write a book? Then I'll write a book on how to write a book. How do I start a business? I write a book on how to start a business. Well, how do I use video? Then I write a book on how, like this shirt, like you can't, you can't see it, but it has video boss on it because I wrote a book on how to write, how to use video. It was crazy. I would write a book for everything because I was always speaking somewhere and people would ask me all these questions. And I was like, okay, I can't talk to all these people all the time. I'm gonna mm. write a book. So I've been writing books for a long time. I've never written fiction though. Mm. This is my first fiction book. So all of my books, and I think right now I'm at book number 13, all of them before now were nonfiction. Okay. And that's because I would write a book on how to do whatever they asked me. And I'm like, let me just write a book for that and put it out. Right. Now I'm kind of full circle. Like I'm, I'm loving AI because it gives me the opportunity to be super creative. Some people think AI makes you lazy. Mm -hmm. Not me. It makes me even more creative which is crazy because I'm up late at night, like, oh, let me let me do something with this right here real quick. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm still up. Like I, one of my friends live in Tampa and she probably was thinking, what is Audrey doing up at two o'clock in the morning? Text me, I'm like, hey, because I haven't gone to bed yet. 
are you leaving Tampa? Because there is a hurricane coming. And she takes me back, no. So she's not even sleeping. Um, but I I, I, I kind of look like, it feels like to me that I've come full circle because that's where I started at. And I have, I, what I did was I was watching something one night on YouTube and it was talking about star seeds, like the awakening and the new moon and all that kind of stuff, which I love all that, right? I love all that esoteric stuff. I love that. That's who I am. And they were talking about star seeds. I'm like, well, what is a star seed, right? So I go look up star seed and it started saying all these characteristics of a star seed. I'm like, wait a minute, am I a star seed? I think I'm a star seed, right? So then I started to look up the star seeds. And then it said there was a star and the name of the star was Lyra, right? And it was like, okay, if you're a star seed and you, these are your characteristics, you know, you're from the star system, Lyra. Wait a minute, am I a star seed from Lyra? Cause this is what I'm thinking. So, so it was weird because the next morning my husband woke up. I said, I think I'm an alien. Right? <laughs> he said, he looked at me. He's like, what's wrong with you? I said, look at my ears. So look at my ears, you guys. I look. know they've got elfish ears. Right? And then they're, and they're different. Yes. Yep. Like they're different. So I said, no. I said, I, if you look at the Lyra, that they're me. I said, so I think I'm a star seed. From he's like, you crazy. But anyway, that that got my imagination to going, right? And then studying it, I was like, I want to write a book about that. Then I want to create a movie about it. So my mind didn't stop. It's like, you want to write a book? Then you want to write the movie? You want... So it just kept going like this. So right now, I did the first book. And I I, I don't have the, the book book is downstairs. But this is my proof. This is the first book. I love it's on that Amazon. Color. Yes. Yeah. So on Amazon, right? I cannot write fiction. Let me just say that, you guys. But I wrote this book with AI, the mm -hmm. entire book in one day. Seriously? Seriously. Cover and all. All of it. Dang. The entire book. Now, I know how to lay out books because right. yeah. I know, I've been laying out books. But I can't, I don't know how to write fiction. My mind doesn't work like that. Not <laughs> long form fiction. Like I can get you a nice, you know, couple of pages of marketing ideas, but not fiction. But what I did was I knew how to write a great prompt. I said, I want it to be this, 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 and this. And it needs to be this. And she needs to be. So the, the character is in Lawrenceville, Georgia. She goes to Georgia Tech and she graduates and she comes back to Lawrenceville. I knew what I wanted. I just, to put it in 179 pages, wasn't going to happen. Right. But I leveraged these great tools to do that, right? And from that, I was like, okay, what else can I do with this? I'm going to turn it into a movie script. And I'm going to shop the movie script around. I've done that before. I've, I've even produced, you know, series. So I know how to do that too. So I'm going to shop it around. I'm going to have a series of eight. I'm going to have a franchise of books. All this stuff. This is how my mind is thinking, Katrina, like you said before. Uh -huh. But that's because of AI. Mm -hmm. That's because of AI. And, you know, there are some real, real, real fiction authors who may think, oh my God, you know, you're not a real writer. And you're right. I'm not. And I don't <laughs> proclaim to be. What I do proclaim to be is a content creator. I create mm -hmm. a, a ton of content, right? So I do proclaim to be that a fiction writer. I'm not a fiction creator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what's beautiful about this. And I think where the creativity that most of us miss is that you have to be curious when you're using AI because it's all the prompts. We say prompts, but it's really a series of questions yeah. and it's your ability to question and keep yeah. questioning and and really be able to help the system define it because it's it needs questions to find the answers and then the once you get the answer it's like is that what you're looking for and then you get to kind of craft it and make it your own so i think people get confused when they hear the word you know what kind of prompts do you need they don't associate that with the curious questions that you're asking it because when i talk with ai I'm asking it questions. I'm like, what if I do this? What if I use this word instead of this word? What if I do this instead of this? Does that like, and you you learn to ask better questions, which does create a curiosity, which mm -hmm. does unlock your creativity because you have to be curious about the conversation you're having. You're not just going to accept it. You want to be able to dive deeper into it. You might be like, yeah. well, where did you source this from? Is this something that somebody else is using? Is this copyrighted already? Like the fact that you can at, learn to ask better questions, which is what we teach mm -hmm. in for in the world of business, is the better questions you are able to ask, the better the results you're going to get in your business. And so I think with your when you talk about using AI, it actually trains you to be better at business because you start asking better questions. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I totally agree. And I think when people learn to ask better questions, they get a better outcome. But it also, like you said, it totally unlocked like that thing like because i'm if you ask me am i a creative person i can't i can't draw anything right mm. i can come up with some great ideas but that's as far as it's gonna go now somebody has to take those ideas and execute on them right that's it's a little bit different right now i can come up with the idea feed it into the system execute the whole thing send it to the other platform let it do I, I, like i even have a deck of trivia cards that i created for the book right oh, nice. they, they should be they should be on the 14th i can't wait to see them because oh, in my goodness. mind I'm thinking, well i'm gonna create these this book it's gonna be limited edition with the trivia cards and that's how my mind thinks yeah. but because of smart tools i've been able to execute whereas mm -hmm. before i would come up with these great ideas and someone else would have to execute them because i'm not execution person on that side mm -hmm. so it, it opens up like you know, and there's so many of them. When I tell you they're everywhere, like someone said to me, you know, you always get these people who want to, they want to be, they want to down AI. They want to talk about how bad it is. And, you know, you're cheating the system. And I'm like, look, at the end of the day, there are no original ideas, right? right. They're executed ideas. You may think, I, when we did the dolls, we went to, um, Georgette husband worked at Fox in Dallas, Fox TV. And his, there was a show called Insights. And so because he worked there, we had, a, we had a plug, right? So we go out there, they have us on the show. I, it crashed our website. People were ordering dolls, it was crazy. But what she said to me, what the host said to us was, I had the idea years ago. I just didn't execute on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Now you can execute on things. What I, what I, what I, what I wish people, what I, what I wish we could get to, because this is what we don't have. When, when I think about this, right, this book, I think about collectibles. There's an industry of collectibles, right? Can't find manufacturers in the United States to do what I want to do done. Like if I need a doll, I got to leave the United States for that because it's too expensive. Mm. We don't have a real toy manufacturer in the United States that mass produce toys or collectibles, which we need that. So mm. when I figure out how to use AI to create my mass production. <laughs> it's game on. No, but I, I I mean, honestly, this has been, uh, I think, a, a brilliant conversation. I think it's just weaved in and out of your journey as an entrepreneur and really what you see moving forward, not just for women in business, but I, I feel like that's where my heart is. And that's where I feel like you are definitely connected with women and just wanting yeah. to be able to rise us up. Like when we when women work together, we rise up together. And it's yeah. not that we want you to feel like you're not worthy or that you can't have this, but like with we what Audrey said is like, AI allows you to implement. It allows you to take the action without taking up any more of your time, knowing what you have already on your plate. So it's it's understanding there's always a learning curve. We get that with everything. But once you start playing with it, and I do call it play, once you start playing with AI, then you start uncovering how it can better help and serve you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the, the game is we want to play. So Audrey, I love this conversation. And where can women connect with you? Where is the best place to learn from you, follow up with you, get your hands on your books, all that wonderful, amazing stuff? What is the best way to connect? So the name is Audrey Bell Kearney. If you go to Amazon and look up Audrey Bell Kearney, everything comes up there, including my podcast. But if you want to connect with me, um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And that's uh, Noise Media Network. That is my my professional profile. If you want to know more about the books, it's the starseedchronicles.com, the starseedchronicles.com. And you can find out there. Now, if you want to learn from me about book publishing and AI, go to thebookpreneur.com. Okay. And I will have all these links here in the podcast. So in the description, you guys will have the links to this one. You'll see it on our website for Herd's podcast. So everything that she just mentioned, we'll make sure you have it. So it's just a click away because <laughs> we know we don't want to go searching and hunting people down. That just takes too much effort. So maybe we need to create an AI around how to find people from podcasts. Maybe that's what we need next. All right, listen, I put the order out there already. Oh, listen, all right. I put the I put the order out there, right? I feel like the guy stole it though. Like I went to somebody on Fiverr. I was like, I don't feel like doing this. I'm gonna go to somebody on Fiverr. And I said, I wanted to be able to connect all the authors with podcasters in their genre. And all they had to do was go into the AI and do some stuff, right? He goes, okay. Never got back to me. I said, he's still in it. No. It was a great idea. He's still, and I didn't even fight him. I said, whatever, if you're gonna steal it, go ahead, do it. Go ahead. But I feel like he's still, because no, he had great ratings, right? He had great ratings. And I said to myself when I shared, I was like, ah, I probably shouldn't share this idea. It's a really good idea, right? 
And he came back. He said, I'm really busy right now. Can I get back to you? I was like, sure. He never did. I mm -hmm. said, he's still my idea right now. Ah, but, it's out in the you universe. Know, we'll find it. It's we'll there. definitely find it. So again, yeah, he'd come back and say, hey, got this great tool for you to use for all things. Like, you stole my idea, bro. <laughs> so when we see it out there, we will know who the original creator was. Yes. The original. You know, I didn't, yeah, I didn't even feel like fighting him. I was like, whatever. I don't even care because I feel like at the end of the day, if you're going to produce it, it's going to help authors get their book out there and sell more books because that's one of the biggest issues that most authors face. Like they don't want to do, they don't want to do the business side. They want to write, they want to create, yeah. Yeah. but there is a, if, if you're trying to get paid from that, there is another side to this where you have to focus on the business side and the marketing side and the sales side. So, you know, if you want to do that, you, you know, and make money, that's what you got to do. But if he puts it out there and it helps them, then I gave that one away and it's for a good cause. Yeah. <laughs> good putting good juju out in the universe having to come back and then you know what when you put something out there and it goes away but that that energy finds its way back to you again always yeah that's what always. i truly believe well hi do you got any more questions for audrey no this was a great conversation i really um i, I have one question so we talked to <laughs> we did we the, the conversation about ai so we know all we've talked a lot about the benefits of it and the really good things about it how how do you protect or do you have ideas or suggestions or things that you share with or teach people about how to protect themselves from the effects of AI? You know, that's interesting you say that because when you think about all the tools that are out there, we have so much content out there. It's really hard to protect yourself. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. like we're doing this podcast right now. It's, it's, it's streaming on all of these other platforms, right? And there are people all around the world who we don't even know exist. They're taking our voice, they're cloning our voice, all that kind of stuff. What I believe, honestly, Heidi, I believe that in order for you to protect yourself in this space, you really, they have talked about putting in like tags so they can tag you, make sure things are real and all that kind of stuff. But in my mind, as smart as AI is getting, and, and I don't know if guys you know, know this or not, but um, Sam Altman, who runs OpenAI, his goal is to put $7 trillion into AI. That's the most money that has ever been put into anything, which wow. means it's not going to slow down. It's only going to speed up. Right. The 100 percent way for you not to be cloned and all that kind of stuff is not to be on the Internet. That's the that's the right. number one way. I don't think that's going to happen for most people. I think that they will create tools that go in place. that's going to almost like when they did NFTs and they put smart contracts on NFTs. Right. Uh -huh. When they when the whole NFT craze got went out, you know, you had to put a smart contract so you can track it. I think they're going to do something very similar, like put a thumbprint on who you are so people will know what or not to shoot. So I feel like that's what we're going with that. Um, okay. Are we there yet? We probably will be there in the next 18 months. I believe that because the, it's going so fast right now. Facebook has got AI meta with the with the with the talking AI and all this stuff. Like they didn't have that a month ago. Right, I mean, not right. not to the public, but now it's out there. And that's because Chat GPT has the you can sit there and talk, you could talk to Chat GPT and they it talks right back to you, which is crazy. So I feel like the the I feel like the tools are coming, the protection is coming. But if you are and a lot of people are definitely afraid of their identity being stolen, but listen, they've been stealing identity for Chat GPT. Yeah, that's not a new thing. Yeah. They've been doing that's that since you've thing. been on social media and you posted yeah. your first yeah. profile picture. I mean, that's that's been a, a given anyway. Yeah. yeah. And, okay, and think well, about this, right? Your voice is out there. Even if you killed your podcast right now today, when you went and put your podcast on Apple, Google, it aggregated to all these other aggregators that nobody knows about. Like they're not, and, and I'll give you a, a prime example. There's one called Himalayan, right? I was at Podfest two years ago and Himalayan was there. They spent a lot of money on their booth. Well, we had never heard of Himalayan. It's a it's a Chinese podcast platform and they spent a lot of money. They was giving out a lot of stuff. Like we never heard of that. Well, it is an aggregator that's pulling all the content from all of the podcast, play, all of the majors, which was Apple, um, Spotify, iHeart, Google. They're pulling all your content and they're sharing it everywhere else. So even if you took it down, it's, it's still somewhere in the world. Yeah. So you really, it's kind of hard to protect yourself. I will say this though. I believe that even though AI is going to be super smart, I believe it's going to force us to get back to doing things in person. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to know whether or not you're talking to a real person until they create a robot of me, yeah, real person. So I, I feel like we're going to, we're going to see people say, you know what? I don't even know 
we can't talk to Heidi on the Zoom because it may be the, the, the freaking clones sitting up there talking to me. How yeah. about we just meet up in person? Because I know yeah. as soon as I could touch you, you know, because yeah. and, and I feel like that I feel like that's needed. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's gonna drive us back that way. Yeah. I think you're gonna start seeing a need for more in-person events, mm-hmm. um, more connections. And I know we got really far into like the digital space of like everybody does Zoom conferences, Zoom meetings. But I think the the in person the the touching and I can't touch yep. Audrey from here. Right. It just won't right. happen. But um, yeah, she's think, real. She's a real person. Oh Lord, yeah, so, right. So claim. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I I definitely see the pros and cons of it. But then there's pros and cons with everything we do. There is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. they are. So, they are. but this was a a brilliant conversation. And like I said, we will absolutely on our podcast. We are streaming everywhere. So Andrew, you'll your voice and everything will be out there. Your links for everything will be out there. They will stalk you and find you just like Heidi stalked and found me. <laughs> uh, that's how you build great friendships in the world, by the way. Yeah. So be, be nice. Careful who you stalk online. Yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> True that. So so everybody, for thank you for listening to Truth Bombs Podcast. Did she really say that? And I hope you kind of got some eye-opening aspects around AI because Andrew really did say a lot of things that made you go, hmm, <laughs> and we like that. So stay tuned, stay posted, and definitely connect with Audrey for more information around what it is to build a book, how to use AI. She's a powerhouse woman. She's a great connector, and you absolutely want to get to know her, follow her, stalk her, and just have a lot of fun. All right, with that, everyone, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys.